Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to get a little bit into home automation. Today you'll know how to work the Wemo. I think I asked you this before I asked Actar Leo Laporte. Is that you playing the guitar riff no, on that? No, that is Dan Luders. Dan and Luders. He actually has a YouTube how-to on how to actually do that, so I need to learn that song. You, 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 you could, though, because you're, you're a guitar man. Yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was about 17. Oh, that's neat. So it's almost yeah. been 17 years, and that's I still, still am awful. I'm no Dan Luders. <laughs> he's pretty amazing. Yeah, he's so fantastic. this is the show where we show you how to do things like turn on red light bulbs from Twitter. We're going to explain that in just a second. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> this <Yeah>. starts <laughs> with uh, something Belkin announced a, a while ago, and as soon as I saw it, I said, I gotta have that called the Wii. Mo, W E M O. If we've got the Belkin Wemo here, you guys had it from before you buy. Leo, yeah, you, I gave it a buy recommendation. You do the actual, the actual review. What we have is a two-part uh, setup. This is the kit, the hundred-dollar kit. It's actually about eighty bucks on Amazon. 80, oh, I just bad. looked it up. There's two parts. There's one that's a switch that you can plug in anything with a with a well plug, and then there's the other one that has a motion sensor which controls the switch. We have the switch back here plugged in. So these are the two parts. You can buy them separately, but uh, this is the uh, the Belkin Wemo switch is plugged in back. Back here, mm -hmm. this does this have Wi-Fi? I believe it has Wi-Fi. When you set this up, because I tried it out the other day, you the way you do this is via their app. You get the Wemo app that's available on iOS. There's a beta version for Android at this point. Right. And what you do is you go to the Wi-Fi network being sent out by the Wemo. That makes the setup pretty easy, in my experience. So really, if you just want to control the Wemo from the internet, this is all you need. The motion sensor would just give you the capability of sensing motion. And this is plugged into the wall. You put this motion sensor where you want people to, to move around. You know, you expect to see some motion. And then it will communicate with the internet and then to your Wemo switch. So if you wanted to have, for instance, a light come on in the back, when somebody comes into the front, you put this in the front and that in the back and then connect them via the internet. Yeah, I mean, there's also a switch on the actual switch. You want to turn it on and off, I can do that, and you're seeing the light turn on and off. There you go. But I mean, that's if you are physically there, but who's going to turn on their lights by walking to it? That's just crazy. <laughs> there's a, all the magic happens now because we have an app and we have an internet inter uh, interface for this thing, right? Yeah, and if you want individual switches, by the way, they're about 45 bucks, so you can expand this to do lots of things. Uh, the application itself will let you turn it on and off as well. But so, so that's a start. So now I can use my iPad to turn the light off and on. Yep, there it goes. There's a yeah. little bit of a delay, like I just turned it on with my iPad, and it's turning it on and off right there. You can see me hitting the button. Okay, that's kind of useful. There must be another use for this, though. Yes, there's absolutely another use for this. Uh, there is a way to extend the Wemo using IFT. Now, we talked about IFT in a previous episode of Know How. That's IFT, this, then, that. It's a web service that connects all kinds of web services together. So if you want to put together Twitter and email, or you want to send notes to Evernote and then send that to your email, you can do all kinds of things using IFT, but there's a channel for the Wemo that can be attached to any number of triggers. So the idea of IF is pretty straightforward. If this, then that. The this can be any number of devices. The that can be any number of actions. In this case, uh, one of the this is is a Wemo, and one of the that's is a Wemo. So we could theoretically connect email to a Wemo, uh, turn on a light when you get a message, something like that? Pretty much. Like One of the first ones I want to show off is something that is already pre-made at IFT. It's text me if the door opens. It uses both of our sensor and switch. What you do is you have your sensor by the door, and when there's movement, you can receive a text message. This is already pre-built. We're going to show you to make a couple of recipes you, as well. Do you need the switch for that, too? Uh, I no, think, I guess not. I don't All think you need so. is you a just remote. You need that guy. Yeah, the, the motion sensor. I, I don't know it, can, it communicates back to the uh, internet. Yes, they all connect to the internet right. by themselves. Okay. They're individual units. So you can have them independent. You can have different switches turning on and off. Lots of different things, things to do there. Uh, but I like to do the lazy thing. So like when the sun sets, I want the lights to turn on oh, that's good. automatically. How would you know when the sun sets? Oh, that's why we've got to use IFT. So we're going to show you how that works. When there's a sunset, let's see, let's run Is there an this. IFT action for the sun? If you believe I'm it, there is. I'm setting now. There is. Look at that. Let's IFT, full, yeah. sunset, then. 
Excuse Turn me. on the Wemo. So what I I'm going to do that. is I'm going to show you how this works. And now, now this is a free service, ifttt.com. Right. So this is the if this then that. We're going to create a recipe. This is how it works. Your trigger channel and look at all of the different things. Our trigger channel is going to be weather. Now one of the things you can do is you can look at all the channels and see all the triggers. In this case, I'm going to look for sunset and sunsets somewhere in this right little there. window. Right there. Sunset. Yeah. That sunset. It's going to trigger this action within 15 minutes of the sunset from our location. But you know, you could have it say, when the temperature gets over 75 degrees, turn on the AC, gets mm -hmm. below 48 degrees, turn on the heater. I mean, there's lots of things you can do with this. And uh, Russell actually checked out how many amperages this thing can handle. It can handle 15 amps, so you could hook up an air conditioner or a heater if you wanted to at wow. that point. So wow. it can handle some heavy duty things. And so with our, with our uh, recipe, we're going to turn on our Wemo. Uh, when the sun sets within 15 minutes of that. That's pretty cool. So that means our lights will turn on, and that's how you set up a recipe very quickly. I mean, it's very basic. So far, though, this isn't that much different than a timer that you'd put on your lights at home. What else well, can we do? Well, a timer, I mean, that's going to turn on whatever it's you want. It's better right? than a timer because it turns it on all the different Based times. Based on yeah. whenever the sun sets yeah, and sun yeah, rises. I like that. Uh, there's a, another quick one, how to do a sunset, a sunrise, same kind of thing. It's very similar. But a light sensor could do that probably cheaper. Yeah, so if, if, let's get more sophisticated. Let's get smarter. Let's get crazy. Now I have <laughs> Okay, let's get crazy then. Well this I built this one for me. And I did a lot of research on this and I couldn't find a way to do this, so I had to come up with one. Anytime I receive a Google Voice SMS message, I want to have a visual notification. Oh, that's of this. cool. So now, your phone could beep, but what if your phone's away or uh, off or you're sleeping? What if a light came on when a text message came in? Now, my thing Wouldn't is. Wouldn't that be wild? I have a data only device, which I turn the notifying sounds off when I'm at work. And then when I go home, I forget to turn them on. So I'm not hearing any beeps or anything, and I miss messages far too often. And I wanted a way to get this. It's so, just like Steve Gibson, you know, he has. His phone goes yabba dabba do every time he receives a spin right payment. He has all these things set up automatically. Well, you don't have to be a super programmer like Steve to set it up now, thanks to this. Now, if you were going to go and create this, you could try to use Gmail. There's a Gmail channel. Now, the problem with the Gmail channel is that it only searches for things every 15 minutes. So that's not very useful that it's looking okay. through your email every 15 minutes. If you use that, you'll know to check every 15. You might as well be checking your phone every 15 right. minutes. That's a little right. bit ridiculous. But there is an instant trigger. You go into the email section. So we're going to say email, choose trigger, send if any email. So anytime I send an email to this address, the this ah. trigger will start. So, we're gonna so now we got to figure out a way to get that email sent whenever a text message right. comes. Right. So let me I'm going to create the trigger and then I'm going to set it up so that it turns on a light. Okay. We'll go to the Wemo, we'll do that. Now I've already set that up as as so a way to do this. It's pretty straightforward. When when an, a message, an email message is sent to if this then that turn on the light. Right. So now we got to get Google Voice to send an email. Now the thing is to ift. What I found is you can't do this on the web. You can't automatically set up a forwarding from Google like maybe set up a filter in Gmail and then right. send it over to Outlook or something like that and create a forward. What happens is when you automatically forward stuff, the sender is the original sender and ift is looking for your name. Em yeah, right. Your email address mm. is the thing that's tied to the email channel. It so, seems so simple when we started. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's it <laughs> How seems. How many hours did you spend figuring this out? I spent probably two to three hours figuring this out. This is great. And the silly thing is, the only way to get this to work was using an email client. I had to go and get right. Thunderbird. That makes sense. Now I went to get Thunderbird's a free email client. Some folks were like, use Outlook. I'm like, I'm not spending a couple bucks. No, for Thunderbird's Outlook. free, and actually, I like Thunderbird better, to be honest. So what I set up was I have I have Thunderbird here on my desktop. It's okay. actually hooked into the Know How email, and so I set that up. I want to set a filter, just like you would with any rules, so a message filter, and I'm going to have one that says SMS forward. I'm going to hit edit there, show you what this looks like. That the subject contains SMS. You could also do this by uh, at text.voice.google.com, which is a really bizarre email and, address. And as you mentioned, you do have to tell Google Voice, email me in text messages. Oh, That's right. a switcher offer that you could turn on. Or That's off. right. In the, G in the Google Voice settings, you're going to go into there, make sure it's sending the, an email notification right. to either whatever email address you want. Right. OK, in that case, once that SMS message comes in, I want it to forward to trigger at ift.com. And because of the way Thunderbird is working, when it sends the, the actual email, Trigger sees it. Ift actually understands it to be from my original email address. Nah, Makes it a how lot easier. That? Okay, so now the thing about Thunderbird, though, by default, it searches for things. It searches for your emails every 10 minutes. Yeah, you want to turn that up. We're huh? going to turn that up. You go into your settings. You go into server settings. Change this to every minute. 
So right in the middle there. So it's going to be checking your email 60 so there, times an hour. There could be as much as a one minute lag between receiving the text message and your light bulb coming That's up. right. So what we're going to do now, and we're going to see if this actually works because... Are you going to send yourself a text message? I'm going to send a text message. <laughs> so let's see what happens. I'm going to... Let's get my... Uh, let me get my Google Voice up so I can send a text message to myself. I wonder if Outlook.com or one of the web-based emails might be able to do this. See, when I, see, when I tried Outlook.com, that was one of yeah. the first things I tried, but it yeah. automatically sends... It, the, if, receive, the sending address is the problem. Right. It's showing... It needs to come as from you, not from Google. It's Got showing it. the original sender's information, yeah. Yeah. and that causes an issue. You know what I can do? I'm going to actually just send it from my iPad because I have Google Voice on this. Let's send this. So oh, I'm, I can send you a message. You want me to send you a well, message? Well, I got call know-how right here. So, All right, so right now, I'm not in the Wemo app. I want to make sure that you guys think I'm not messing with this. I'm going to text myself and be like, I Okay, hope we're going to see how long. It could take works. as long as a minute. We might have some time to burn Actually, here. Actually, what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to, once I send this, uh -huh. I'm going to, for the sake of television, I'm going to actually tell this device to get all the messages now. Just say, get my mail. Get all my all mail right. right now. Get the mail. All right, watch the light bulb now. Watch the light bulb. We got to see if the light bulb if if you get a text message that's going to go on, right? Mhm. Mm Come on. Get all messages and now we're going to wait and to see what happens right now because of course it won't work on air even though we've tested this 55 <laughs> I times. I wonder, you know, I wonder if there's an easier uh, logic. This seems like it's hard to do. It seems like there should be an easier logic. You know, that's the thing. I experimented with every single thing. In the it, 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 one, the, intuitively, you, you'd think there would be more ways to do that. Uh, no, there isn't, unfortunately. Right now, the way the <laughs> Gmail uh, program works, the channel, That's there the way it goes. to do it. And it's going to turn. Let's look at the messages. <laughs> and bingo. There and, it goes. Yay! We got an e-text message came in. Now, you can see, I never switched to the Wemo app. I did not mess no, with that. No, he didn't do it by I sent hand. a second message. I would punch him if they he did They just that showed up hand. in my email box. Now, again, there is a delay, now, right? Now, you got to have another rule. Oh, it got brighter. Uh, yeah, we happen to have, we've added a little cool thing to this it's light blinking. bulb. There's a little flasher unit that costs about six bucks at the hardware store attached to this oh, light. Oh, this is really going to let you know. So this thing will be blinking at you, and you'll be like, hey... I need you to could get attention. more sophisticated, probably, you could say, if an, a text message comes from my mom, I really want to know about that. You can refine this and make it even smarter. You maybe don't want this to go off every time there's a text message. Well, for me, I'm pretty bad at this. And you don't want it for every email. This is the kind of thing I wanted to do. And obviously, this thing is going to be blinking at you until you turn it off. And it... That's another project for another day. How do you turn that off? <laughs> Well, you can actually go to the Wemo app and turn it off. No, 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 no. That would be too easy. You want me to send a SMS to turn it off? You could have checked your phone if you want to do something that easy. I guess I could send an SMS to turn it off. That's <laughs> send another a return recipe. message. But there's so many. <laughs> the thing about that Gmail thing is that it was such a bizarre thing to set up because there was no simple way. And right now, if they said that they might change the way they do Gmail so it scrapes it more often than every 15 minutes, but for something that's immediate, Within what? That was like a minute. It felt like an hour when you're on fine. this side of it. Minutes. Because you're like, oh, is it going to work on TV? And then it did. So there you go. That's how to set up a visual notification system. We were joking around by hooking this up to an air compressor, uh, which would be really noisy. It could inflate a doll whenever you get a text message. Well, uh, or, or, sh or sh exactly. Yeah. In case yeah. Or a raft, or you could, it could have a shock collar for the interns. You get the idea. Really, this is just a very simple example. You could, and if, the nice thing is, if you go to if this then that, ifttt.com, there's lots of pre built recipes. There's Wemo recipes mm -hmm. already built that should give you some ideas about logic and so forth. But this is, you know what? This is programming. You're actually learning how to do programming uh, in, in a very interesting way. And I love it that we can program in meat space using devices like the Belkin Wemo, which gives us real access to what's going on in the real world. I really do enjoy this silly visual notification system. I want, I wanted something like this for real for the longest time, and now I actually have one. Assuming I can steal the Wemo you from Twit. Uh, let's let's uh, take a look at our Google Plus site. You know, we have a Google Plus community. You guys, there's over 2,000 of you guys in there now. Wow. That's awesome. It's fantastic. That's great. I want to say a big thanks to Dan Phillips. He's a new moderator at our uh, Welcome, Google Plus Dan. Thank site. Thank you. He's been a very active member of the community. And just by his interactions alone, that's how I got to know Dan. Always got great ideas. So please welcome him at the Google Plus community. Available at gplus.2 or gplus.to slash twitkh. If you want to get, if you want to know what's going on on the show, I've actually put up pictures for from episodes that are coming up in the future. So definitely take a look at our Google Plus page where we've got a lot of this information. Next week, I'm going to kind of take the helm because I have been wanting to do this for a while. I bought a Mac Pro in 2010. And I've been waiting, as many Mac Pro owners have, for Apple to update this thing. And they still, three years later, 
haven't updated it. Now it's starting to feel like it's kind of old and slow. So I thought I would see if we could upgrade that Mac Pro to make it a little bit more modern. New video card just came out from Sapphire awesome. that updates it to 20, at least 2012 technology. I'm going to put some more RAM in, and we're going to create an Apple Fusion Drive. You know, the new iMac and some of the Mac Minis come with this Fusion Drive. It's a, it's think something only Apple does, where you take an SSD and a spinning drive, and you merge them together with some very smart logic built into OS X Lion. So we're going to show you how you can do your own Fusion Drive on a Mac Pro. I'll be doing benchmarks all week to see if we can get that Mac Pro anywhere close to the iMac, the MacBook Retina. No, but at least it'll be faster than the old Mac. Yeah, if, if Apple's not going to upgrade it, Maybe Leo's going to do it. <laughs> so that's going to be awesome. I can't That'll wait to see that next yeah, week. Yeah. And next week will be for two years. It's uh, my this, what? anniversary. Oh, of the yeah, you, yeah, I saw your uh, post. You left PC Magazine. On the 17th of March, two wow. years ago. St. Patrick's Day. That's a good time to celebrate, i got to say. Is so. that why the beer turned green all of a sudden? I have no idea what you're talking Couldn't about. Couldn't figure that out. <laughs> We Thanks for joining us. Are yeah, we done? I think we're done here. Well, now that you know how to make a red light bulb turn on every time you get a text message, go out and do it, okay? We'll see you next time on Know How. <laughs>physically there, but who's going to turn on their lights by walking to it? That's just crazy. <laughs> Those are, all the magic happens now because we have an app and we have an internet inter uh, interface for this thing, right? Yeah, and if you want individual switches, by the way, they're about 45 bucks, so you can expand this to do lots of things. Uh, the application itself will let you turn it on and off as well, but... So, so that's a start. So now I can use my iPad to turn the light off and on. Yep, there it goes. There's a yeah. little bit of a delay. Like, I just turned it on with my iPad, and it's turning it on. years, and that's I still, crazy. still, I'm awful. I'm no Dan Luters. <laughs> he's pretty amazing. Yeah, he's fantastic. So this is the show where we show you how to do things like turn on red light bulbs from Twitter. We're going to explain that in just a second. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> this <Yeah>. starts <laughs> with uh, something Belkin announced a, a while ago, and as soon as I saw it, I said, I gotta have that, called the Wii Mo, W E M O. If we've got the Belkin Wii Mo here, you guys had it from before you buy. Leo, yeah, you, I gave it a buy recommendation. You do the actual, the actual review. What we have is a two part uh, setup. This is the kit, the $100 kit. It's actually about 80 bucks on Amazon. 80, oh, I just bad. looked it up. There's two parts. There's one that's a switch that you can plug in anything with a, with a well, plug. And then there's the other one that has a motion sensor, which controls the switch. We have the switch back here plugged in. So these are the two parts. You can buy them separately. But uh, this is the, uh, the Belkin Wemo switch is plugged in back here. Mm -hmm. This, does this have Wi-Fi? I believe it has Wi-Fi. When you set this up, because I tried it out the other day, you, the way you do this is via their app. You get the Wemo app that's available on iOS. There's a beta version for Android at this point. Right. And what you do is you go to the Wi-Fi network. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to get a little bit into home automation. Today you'll know how to work the Wemo. I think I asked you this before I asked Actor Leo Laporte. Is that you playing the guitar riff no, on that? No, that is Dan Luters. And Dan Luters. He actually has a YouTube how-to on how to actually do that, so I need to learn that song. You could, you, you, you could though, because you're a good, you're a guitar man. Yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was about 17. Oh, that's neat. So it's almost yeah. been 17. On and off, right there. You can see me hitting the button. Okay, that's kind of useful. There must be another use for this, though. Yes, there's absolutely another use for this. Uh, there is a way to extend the Wemo using IFT. Now, we talked about IFT in a previous episode of Know How. That's if this, then that. It's a web service that connects all kinds of web services together. So if you want to put together Twitter and email, or you want to send notes to Evernote and then send that to your email, you can do all kinds of things using IFT, but 
there's a channel for the Wemo that can be attached to any number of triggers. So the idea of if is pretty straightforward. If this, then that. The this can be any number of devices. The that can be any number of actions. In this case, uh, one of the this is is a Wemo, and one of the that's is a Wemo. So we could theoretically connect email to a Wemo, uh, turn on a light when you get a message, something like that? Pretty much. Like One of the first ones I want to show off is something that is already pre-made at IFT. It's text me if the door opens. It uses both of our sensor and switch. What you do is you have your sensor by the door, and when there's movement, you can receive a text message. This is already pre-built. We're going to show you to make a couple of recipes you, as well. Do you need the switch for that too? Uh, I no, think, I guess not. I don't All think you need so. is you a remote. You just need that guy. Yeah, the, the motion sensor. I, I don't know it, what can, it communicates back to the uh, internet. Yes, they all connect to the internet right. by themselves, okay. the individual units. So you can have them independent. You can have different switches turning on and off. Lots of different things, things to do there. Uh, but I like to do the lazy thing. So like when the sun sets, I want the lights to turn on. Oh, that's good. Automatically. How would you know when the sun sets? Oh, that's why we got to use if. So we're going to show you how that works when there's a sunset. Let's see, let's run is there an this. if to action for the sun? Do you believe I'm it? I'm setting is. now. There is. Look at that. Let's if full, yeah. sunset, then Excuse turn me. on the Wemo. So what I I'm going to do that. is I'm going to show you how this works. And now, now this is a free service, IFTTT.com. Right. So this is the if this, then that. We're going to create a recipe. This is how it works. Your trigger channel. And look at all of the different things. Our trigger channel is going to be weather. Now, one of the things you can do is you can look at all the channels and see all the triggers. In this case,